Thank you. Episode Always. number 10. Is it 10 already? Double digits? I think it is. Oh my gosh. 10. Yay. Yay. That's exciting. So I get to bring you the questions today and I decided to do a theme. Oh gosh. Question theme. And the theme is fun and games. Okay. So the Hawkinsons are having game night. What are you playing? Well, one of the games that I love to play, but my family has like nixed it, is the game Pandemic, <laughs> which I feel like is very fitting right now. Like we should really go after it, try to beat it. But there are a lot of different steps to that game. Have you played it before? I've never even heard of it before. Okay. I mean, I'm living it, but. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that would be my favorite board game that nobody will play with me anymore. You should okay. come over. We'll totally play okay. it. Okay. Um, but I just love cards. I played pitch with my grandfather when I was little. He taught me, yeah. and we played all the way up to right before he passed away. Coolest story, actually. He had dementia, and so and he didn't know who I was, and he would randomly just scream. It was so awkward. You know, it just the dementia was really taking over his brain. I still could not beat him pitch, though. He wouldn't know who people were. He wouldn't know what was going on. But that man could still play pitch. So pitch is still one of my favorite games. What are you all going to eat during game night? I love nights that we just do appetizers. Mm -hmm. You know, some cold, some warm. Taco dip and um, meatballs and different things like that. So that's, if I really was going to have a super fun night, that would be, it would be appetizer galore across the island. Nice. Those are fun nights. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite sport to watch in person or on TV? Before I moved to the South, I would say nothing. But Clemson football, I've I have fallen in love. And now that my daughter is going there, it's even more we have a I have a financial investment into the situation. But I absolutely love watching Clemson football on television. I if you would have came to me ten years ago and said, you're going to spend your weekend evenings watching football and television. I would say, you're crazy. <laughs> but I have a ball. With, in the fa it's, a fa it's a family affair. Mm -hmm. Mara, even my nine-year-old, like, is cheering on the Tigers. So Clemson football, for sure. That's so fun. Have you all been to a game before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and going to Tiger Town, like, there's just nothing better. I mean, okay, yeah. we might lose some Gamecock fans off of this, so I probably <laughs> should probably remove that. But... There is just something about being there that feels a little bit like the best place on earth. I don't know. There's a feel yeah. to it. So I love going to Clemson games. It, they're very different this year, I know. Like, tail, people aren't tailgating, limited fans. So we'll probably take this year off. But I, I love it. Good. Well, those are your three questions. Okay. So the topic today came from a conversation that we had just last weekend. Okay. And I said to you, I want to talk to you about this, but this really should be a podcast. So I had a conversation last week with somebody that was, I was in the chiropractor's office and I was talking to somebody in the chiropractor and they're like, how are you doing? I bet, I bet things are really hard, right? Are you doing okay? And I adopted the tone and I was like, I mean, yeah. We're, we're getting along, hanging in there, hanging in there, doing fine. And I walked away from that and I thought, why did I do that? We're, we're not just hanging in there. We're good. Like everything's good, happy, healthy, friendly. Like what, what is it that made me adapt that tone of, oh, you know, man, how are you doing? I'm, I bet you're so busy. Well, I am busy to a point, but I'm loving it all. Everything's great, you know? Yeah. But I didn't portray that in my answer to her because I adopted the tone that she brought to me. And I thought that, why do we do that? So I, I, I wanted to just open that up because I think we do that a lot about a lot of different things. And I think it's a really cruddy way to show up. So I wanted to see what you thought about it. 
you know, as you're talking about this and you said, why do we do that? Where did that come from? I think it starts when we're very young. Think about being in school and you took a test. And everybody around it, it, everybody around you was like, man, that was so hard. That was so hard. And you were like, oh, gosh, I thought I did well on it. And then scores come back. And if the pe- your friends around you didn't do well, you didn't want to say, I did well. You know? Yeah. So what do you say? You're like, oh, yeah, I got a good grade, but I guessed on half of them. It does start young. I never mm-hmm. thought about a scenario like that, but you're absolutely right. We adapt to the people around us to feel, is it makes us feel better or we want to make them feel better? I wonder if it's both. Because in my scenario that I just brought up that started the conversation, I think it was to make her feel better, I guess, because it certainly didn't make me feel better to say that, Oh, we're we're doing fine, you know. We're busy. I mean, but did it really make her feel better? Because she didn't leave with any hope that things could be better. No, it was just misery loves company is all she left with. I feel icky. Even you saying that, you're right. I I, (laughs) no, it's not me. It's true. Yeah, like there's no what positive comes out of that when we try to bring ourselves down to add more misery or sadness or fatigue into a situation that's already fatigued when that's not really the way that we're showing up. You know, part of it, I think, is not to kick somebody when they're down Mm -hmm. or not to rub salt in the wound type approach. Somebody is having a difficult time and you want to resonate with them, but you don't have to be braggy about it it I think it goes back to what is your intention of the conversation is your intention to bring them hope and to give them a ray of light that it could be different of course you want to connect with people when they're having difficulties you want people to connect with you when you're having difficulties I want them to hear me when I'm saying I am having a hard time in this I'm struggling but if anybody If all I ever heard was, yep, me too, yep, it stinks, yep, it's just life, that's not gonna, that's not what I wanna hear, really. No, I want somebody to be glad they ran into me. Yeah. Because they walked away feeling hope Mm -hmm. or feeling a sense of joy just being in that situation, like adding some joy into their day. And that wasn't what happened in that situation. Mm -hmm. So furthermore, we went on to talk about how many times we change how we talk because we think that's what somebody needs, but it isn't always true. So we used, we used a scenario of somebody losing a child Mm -hmm. and you think to yourself, I don't want to talk about my children and good things that are happening in their life when I know that this person lost their child. Yeah. And the conversation that came out of it is we had heard it from somewhere else, but that that kind of closes down the opportunity for that person to talk about their child, the joy that that child brought into their life, the thing they miss about their child. It shuts down that conversation Mm -hmm. because we're not comfortable talking. We've set the tone with just not being comfortable talking, being ourselves. I mean, okay, that that's really what it is, like authentically showing up. We have we walk into it and don't feel comfortable authentically showing up. And that kind of mm-hmm. sets the tone for nobody being able to feel like they can authentically show up. Yeah. You know, but showing up authentically or being genuine when you're talking to someone means owning your emotions too and not being ashamed of them and not letting them control you either Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are uncomfortable with that there are are people in this world that you just cannot completely be open with 
because they can't handle it. I've used the question with some of my coaching clients before, how do you feel about the word vulnerability? Mm -hmm. And there has been answers before saying, I hate it. I hate the word vulnerability. I think the word vulnerability is awesome. Like it's one of my favorite words. And And that's really how they feel. Well, okay, so there was a talk Brene Brown did. Yes. Where the whole topic of vulnerability came up. And she mentions in there how we're taught from the time we're young to have courage. You've got to have courage. You've got to have courage. Like, that's an admirable trait. But to be vulnerable, if you're vulnerable, that shows weakness. And so you want to avoid that. And... The interesting thing is you can't have courage without vulnerability. And she breaks it down in a beautiful way that's full of comedy as well, mm-hmm. I think. She's very funny. And um, that is a thing, though, that a lot of people are not willing to do is to be vulnerable. Because, because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, and, and there's a fear of rejection in mm-hmm. there. If you really show how you feel, let's even go, let's go back to my being in the chiropractor's office. If I really show how I feel, not, not to be braggy, I wouldn't have come off as braggy, but I'm like, no, everything is great. The kids are doing great. I am loving working for BNI and coaching, Mm -hmm. doing the podcast. It's like a dream come true. I'm, things are great. I potentially, maybe I didn't do it because I would fear that I would get an eye roll. That would be me being vulnerable. That would be me truly showing up with how, how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And true emotions means, exposing those means an opportunity to be rejected. Yeah, that's super true, for sure. But to your intention and what you're saying behind it. Why would you even why would you even tell her that? It's to give her hope to leave her with a a spark, if you will. But it's also um not that you haven't had difficulties. You're continually overcoming trials we both are. But we're not staying in a place that, oh, this is so hard, poor me, doom and gloom, when we're faced with an obstacle or a situation. Sometimes I think we call obstacles just situations. We make it to be more dramatic than it needs to be. And I don't even know that things are going bad for her. That's almost how she's just approaching the connection piece with people right now. Like she was attempting to connect with me and she was using those, oh, you know, how's it going? Because maybe that's just because that's how people are talking right now. So Mm -hmm. she was using that as a connection piece, but she brought herself down. I don't know that, I think we easily, if I would have come back with just an answer to that question without it being all, I'm going to match your energy level. If I would have really just given the answer to the question if that might have just perked her overall way of speaking up because I don't know that she was there I think she was just trying to meet people where they were at it's kind of an ugly cycle if you think about it I wonder if she was trying intentionally trying to do that or if it's just client after client after client is communicating that way and then it truly is affecting her energy and so that's Mm -hmm. how she is communicating i will tell you months ago uh, there was somebody i was having a conversation with on a regular basis and it was that way all the time just oh this is what's going on now who knows what the future's gonna hold this that and the other And when I changed how I responded, then our conversations started changing. 
that person no longer had an expectation that I was going to show up with all these problems or all of this poor me talk or victim mentality talk and I had to tell him one time I had to say I know there's a lot of bad things going on and everything's not going great in my life there are things we're having to overcome right now but I'm not living in the woe is me I'm looking for the way to take advantage of the situation. What opportunity is in this situation that we can take advantage of that's placed here for this time as a gift to us? And my conversations with him started changing. I don't know if his conversations with everybody started changing or if he just knew I wasn't interested in misery loves company type conversation but it does and it's for the better why not like you're spreading joy that's a good thing yeah and in the our last podcast we did we talked about what you focus on you will find Mm -hmm. you know that was one of the uh statements we talked about and that is so true just even playing out here like if we're just like uh i mean listen i could find 20 million bad things that are going on in the world right now and i could fixate on all of them i mean it 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 doesn't take much to like really look at things going Mm -hmm. rough if you're going to focus on that then that's all you're going to see and it does suck your energy yeah now and i will also say during this pandemic neither of us have lost a loved one no to this virus Neither of us have lost our jobs. Our spouses haven't lost our jobs. Um, Our kids have been safe, even if they haven't always been happy. (laughs) They've been safe. So I do want to acknowledge that we haven't faced some of the trials some people have. Yeah, trials have not come other than just the traditional figuring Mm-hmm. I mean, early on with our business, we lost about 80% of our jobs in two weeks. They got put on hold. That was in March. Within a two week period, about 80% of our projected jobs that year, this year, got put on hold. That was a big hit. So that could have been really bad for our company. So we had to make a new plan, assess the situation, what are we going to do, that we had those conversations. But um, even in the midst of a far more difficult storm, you still have the choice of what you're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. And then that is going to change the way that it plays out. And a lot of times, people who have lost the most they are the ones who will walk around with the greatest gratitude Mm -hmm. because they know what they got to experience and they know the depth of the pain of that loss and so they don't want to miss out on that opportunity with someone else no, isn't it crazy that the the joy that comes off the joy that can come out of hard times and that people that don't go to, through hard times they tend to miss out on because they haven't understood the loss or the appreciation for things. Mm-hmm. It isn't it is an interesting dynamic that I hope that I always can keep perspective. You know, gratitude is not just an emotion. It's a state of mind and it's an energy, it's a force. And when you show up with gratitude in your life, it changes the world around you. 
And it doesn't matter the reason why you have the gratitude either. You don't have to go through a very difficult situation to be grateful for this moment in time. It's a choice of do you want to live in gratitude or not? There's this book by Ann Voskamp called 1000 Gifts. And I was blessed to read it early on so that, and it, it assisted me in living in gratitude. And one of the statements she makes in that book is that, I want to get this right, um, Thanksgiving precedes the miracles. Mm. So giving yeah. thanks now is how we get to experience the miracles later. We get to see them, we get to breathe them, we get to feel them, they're there. If we are not in gratitude now, then it, miracles don't, are not even, you're, it's not like your radar is not on. Yeah, the, I was going to say, you're not even in a place that you could see it. You don't see it. And that is what I feel like we've experienced during this time from quarantine and the now just pandemic life there are so many opportunities and I'm so grateful for them like my kids missed out on going to camp and that is a very special place for them and I am so grateful for their camp because they get poured into their spiritual life gets poured into in a way that just can't happen in regular life. They're disconnected, they're not on their phones. Every minute of every day is so intentionally designed to create community between these girls and encourage them and build them up. I absolutely love their camp and they didn't get to go this year. And all of us shed tears over that. We were very sad that they didn't get to go. And they also go to camp with friends from all over the U.S. that they only see at camp. And so they were missing out on those friendships. But um, we, what we did was we looked for another opportunity. And so we, we said, well, what would you want to do? They took up scuba diving. And we got to, Ken and I got to experience something that we enjoy doing with our girls. And it was so fun. And it looked different. The summer looked so different. But we found the opportunities in this unique time. Having more game nights. Cooking more dinners at home. There's always opportunity in an obstacle. And you've got to find it. You know, something you said when everything just started. You mentioned um, early on that 80% of your projects mm -hmm. immediately shut down. That you you were working on at your company mm -hmm. and I remember having a conversation with you and you had mentioned if the doors have to shut I mean that was that was a thought you were you were trying to work through what you didn't know how things were going to look going forward you didn't right. know the way that things were going to be able to adapt and you didn't know if the government was going to allow the doors to stay open like mm -hmm. overall and you said if the doors have to shut and and it's over then and you just started talking about opportunity. And I don't even know if you remember this conversation we had. <laughs> it literally. stuck with me in such a big way that you literally just said, there's a good chance I'm going to lose my job. So, da 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 <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, you, you love serving the people that you serve, and you're good mm -hmm. at it. So it wasn't like you were like, thank goodness, I don't have to work my job anymore. It was, if, if this is what ha is going to happen then we will just figure it out. And that has stuck with me thinking, I wanna always have that perspective. This may not go my way, so we'll figure it out. I literally remember you talking about it and I remember where we were at when you were talking about it because it, it, it stuck with me that much. That's exactly what you're saying is, I'm gonna find the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because you could do the woe is me for a very long time. And that could get really ugly. 
and relationships could be hurt by it and people could be hurt by it. And then you'd have, everybody's going to do woe is me around you, right? Just like we said from the very beginning, mm-hmm. you're going to bring the energy down all over the place and people are going to try to match your energy or you just, you're like, what, what's, where do I go from here? And that's exactly what you said when everything started looking like there's a potential for you to shut down and all your products were shutting down. So just to say, I mean, I do want to say to the listeners that don't know you, because the listeners that know you know this by you walk the talk so clearly. This, everything that you're sharing right now is the way that you live your life. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is not just lights and cameras. (laughs) This is real life. And it's intentional choice too. Because I, I know you, I know the work that you put in to live an intentional way that the world's better because you're in it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I don't remember that conversation, but I do remember, I, I'm super curious as to where we were, but I do remember that time and where my peace came from was just knowing that God was already in the future. And it would be a big deal if our company closed. It would be a big deal for my immediately my immediate family because it's a family business. It would be a big deal for all of the employees. And it would be a real big deal for my household because my husband's in law enforcement. And you don't go into law enforcement to make a lot of money, you know? So if I were to lose my job, our income would be cut significantly and I had peace though about it and it's interesting because years ago when the market crashed 08 09 that was my hardest financial year ever or years ever Um, we should do a show on that actually it would be really good to for us to talk about what happened that year Mm. And how did we get through it? And what did we learn from it? Because financial struggles are gonna hit all of us at some point, and they hit us big time that year. So I knew the potential for what was to come, and I just had a piece that no matter what happened, God was already there. So why should I worry about it? And the Bible tells us that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. In fact, it says, consider it pure joy when you face obstacles of any kind. And that, that's from James 1, 2 through 4, that section of um, the passage about count it all joy. And that became, both of us, our mantra during during those beginning months. And it was interesting. Both of us were in James. Both of us were studying James, but we hadn't really even talked about it. No, it was randomly one day, one of us said, I'm studying James. And I'm like, I'm studying James. I mean, it was really interesting. And we embraced it. We did. Yeah. God delivered James, that book. I mean, that was, it was intentionally put before both of us during that time. Mm -hmm. And we were able to share it with other people. Yes. And I think that's what we need to do when we encounter somebody who's having a really tough time meet them where they are let them know that i i hear you but don't leave them where they are Mm. leave them with an opportunity to get out of the ditch leave them with a truth that could change their life leave them with a little bit of hope from the lord so that they don't have to stay there. I think that's what we need to do. And it is difficult when you feel like you're the odd man out. But it's what the world needs. It's what I need whenever I'm in the ditch. I need somebody to come along and say, I hear you, but let's look at this. Mm-hmm. And let me And let me speak some hope and love into you. Mm-hmm. Visit us at www.liveyourdesign.life to learn more about our coaching business and see our other podcast.